Hello, everyone. It is officially 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Welcome from all across the world. We are so excited to have you join us. I am Simone, and I'm from Washington University in St. Louis, and I am so excited to bring about 12 incredible residency programs that are joining us this evening to tell you all about them. So we are going to get started this evening. I would like to ask you to please mute your microphones and turn off your cameras. We have so many people engaged in this webinar that we want to ensure that the bandwidth works perfectly. Uh, so we are going to get started tonight with some incredible tips from an amazing Instagram influencer who also happened to be my college freshman roommate. I would like to introduce Angeline Pham. Next slide, please. All right. Thank you, Simone, for the introduction. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us today. My name is Angeline, and I'm currently a third year psychiatry resident at the University of Maryland Shepherd Pratt Psychiatry Residency Program. You can also find me on Instagram at the.psych.md. So before we get started, I just wanted to take a moment and congratulate all of you on making it through third year in the middle of this ongoing pandemic. I'm so sorry that your med school experience and residency application cycle has been so different from what you had imagined, but you have shown how resilient you are and we're all excited to have you be a part of the best specialty. And yes, I'm a little biased. Um, so let's get started next. So today I'm gonna highlight some tips pertaining to recommendation letters, the personal statement, and choosing where to apply. Next. In terms of the application timeline, probably the most important date to know is October 20th. And the reason for that is that it's the absolute last day that you should have all your applications sent to programs of interest. This is because the 21st of October is when programs start sifting through applications and sending out interview invites. And I actually suggest you maybe even try submitting earlier than this date because in years past, the ERAS website has been known to crash when everyone's on it all at once. And you just don't wanna deal with um, the stress of that were to happen. I would hope that by now they've improved their website, but you never know. Next. So hopefully by now you've already started asking for letters, but if not, don't panic. Uh, you still have time to ask. I would just make sure to do it soon so your letter writers have at least a month to write them for you. Um, people you can consider asking aside from attendings that on rotations that you did well on would be any research mentor that you worked with longitudinally who may know you well. Um, ideally, one to two letters should come from psychiatrists, but it's understandable if you may only have one letter from a psychiatrist because of possibly not being able to do any electives or aways because of the pandemic. I would suggest you look at program websites, though, just to make sure that you meet all of their requirements in terms of who your letter of recommendations should come from. Additionally, I also recommend trying to have at least two letters uploaded by October 20th, just so that programs have some letters to review when they're reviewing your application. And it's okay if you only have three letters instead of four. Programs would prefer three strong letters um, than three uh, letters plus an additional mediocre letter. On ERAS, you can also pick and choose which letters go to which program. So if you happen to have more than three letters, um, this might help if you have like a letter writer that has an affiliation with a certain school, for example. Oftentimes students wonder if a letter from the program director or chairman carries more weight. However, I would only suggest doing so if the person knows you well, because otherwise the letter might come off as bland and it wouldn't really help you much. Next. So writing the personal statement can be one of the toughest parts of the application because it's just so subjective. However, it also serves as a great opportunity for you to stand out and highlight what makes you unique. I recommend starting off with a discussion of the reason you chose psychiatry. So some ideas you can consider um, to discuss in your personal statement would include like interesting patient encounters or personal or family experiences but you shouldn't just spend the whole time in your personal statement just talking about this. Programs want to also see that you learned um, from those experiences and also showed some growth from those experiences. You also want to highlight what you've done that demonstrates your interest in psychiatry while also discussing what you hope to do to contribute to the residency program or the um, 
uh, future specialty of psychiatry. Um, you can also talk about any future goals that you have after residency if you happen to have some idea what you're interested in. Next. So the personal statement should read like a cohesive story and have a unifying theme. So don't try to include everything in your CV in your personal statement. It's just not the place for that. Um, if you wanted to, you should only highlight those things that you did that fits in with the overall message you're trying to convey. Try to keep it concise around one page or 750 to 850 words um, because program directors have thousands of applications they're sifting through. You also need to be professional in your personal statement and try to avoid using colloquial language and just make sure you're checking your grammar, spelling, and punctuation because they're all very important. Um, make sure you proofread it many times. I would also suggest giving it to a trusted mentor or family member to review um, because often they might have more insight into what you should and shouldn't include. Next. So because there are hundreds of psychiatry residency programs out there, trying to decide where to apply can be a pretty daunting task. Before you even start doing your research, I would actually suggest sitting down and deciding what things are most important to you in a residency program. So does location matter the most to you because possibly um, family or your significant other? Do you want a program that has more solid training in therapy or psycho farm or a good balance of both? And if therapy is important to you, what kind of therapy training do you want? Do you want a program that's more psychodynamically focused or CBT focused? Other things to consider are if you prefer a community or academic program, or do you prefer a large program with lots of faculty, residents and diverse training sites, or a more intimate program where everyone gets to know each other really well and there's good mentorship. If you are research focused, something to consider is if the program has a physician research track. So where can you go to research some of this information? I recommend actually asking around and talking to faculty or residents at your med school, as well as residents at other programs uh, who you like may know or may have graduated from your med school. They have really valuable information that sometimes you just can't glean on paper. You can ask them like what their impressions are of the program and uh, what their interview experience was like. I also found the AMA Frida site as well as the Doximity Residency Navigator site helpful just to kind of filter and find out what programs are out there and like whatever location I'm interested in applying to. A lot of programs are also on social media these days, uh, so it's a great place to get a better feel for programs as well, especially since interviews are being done virtually this year. And of course the webinars like the one that um, is being hosted by Simone today is super helpful as well. Next. So when it comes to deciding how many programs um, to apply to, unfortunately there isn't a magic formula to figure that out and it's really highly variable um, based on your application. This is something I actually highly recommend talking to um, your mentor who might have more experience and can guide you in determining what's a good number of schools to apply to. Also a good place to look to just get a general idea is the NRMP reports that come out periodically. Um, you can get a general sense of how many programs applicants with similar stats to you apply to and match versus didn't match. One of the things that one of my mentors suggested for me to do was follow something called the rule of thirds, which is where you apply to a broad range of programs, um, like a good, so that would mean like a good mix of like safety programs, programs that seem to be a good fit for you um, based on your scores and stats and where you're coming from um, in terms of your med school, and then also applying to some reach programs as well. You'll find that in general, you'll get a good mix of interviews from all three tiers. So for example, for me, I applied to 29 programs and received um, invites from 12 programs and it ended up being um, just as what my mentor had said. Um, it was like a good mix of like some safety, some reach and then some like in the middle schools that were a good fit for me as well. Next. So with that, I just wanted to end by saying good luck as you embark on this residency application journey in the beginning of a lifelong career in psychiatry. Please feel free to message me if you have any questions um, on Instagram. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you might have on there. So with that, let's get started with what you guys are all here for um, and learn about all the amazing programs we have here today. Next, we'll hear all about Washington University in St. Louis from Simone. 
Thank you. Thank you, Angelina. It is so wonderful to hear from you and hear those incredible tips. Make sure that you follow her on Instagram. She definitely gives uh, incredible recommendations for the whole application process. So I'm Simone. I'm a resident at Washington University in St. Louis. Uh, we have 13 residents per year. You are welcome to ask us any questions. Our email is psychresidency at wustel.edu. And please follow us on Instagram. You can learn all about our lives outside the hospital and all the fun things that we do when we are not working. Next. So something that I love about Washington University is there are so many opportunities, both in research as well as leadership. So in regards to research, we have funds to support research as well as travel costs. Our residents as well as attendings publish numerous publications every year. We also have a leadership track for those that are not as interested in research like me, where you have opportunities to serve on various committees throughout Washington University. For example, I serve on a graduate wellness education committee where we work with all specialties in order to ensure that we are all maintaining a healthy lifestyle outside of the hospital. We also have lots of elective opportunities, and this is one of my favorite parts about Washington University. We have eight weeks of electives during our second year, and then four months during our fourth year. And something that's really special is that they're very unique. We have a sleep medicine elective, a psychotherapy elective, a research one, one for child and adolescent, toxicology, forensics. And then if we don't have an opportunity that fits your interests, you can always create one. I am currently in a toxicology elective where I'm able to learn all about snake bites as well as overdoses on SSRIs. So it's a wonderful opportunity to be able to work for, with emergency medicine physicians, pediatrics, as well as medicine, and to be able to work amongst various specialties in the hospital is a wonderful opportunity to connect. Next. So my five favorite aspects of the program. So you can go on our website and find lots of information about all of our rotations. Um, and we all throughout this webinar have incredible residents. So, but what makes us special? So every week we have weekly supervision with faculty mentors. We're able to discuss incredibly challenging cases and also get career advice and support. You also have no call as a PGY3 or PGY4, which is awesome because you have all weekends off, which means that you're able to explore the city or see significant others in other cities uh, like my own. And that's been really special and an important part of recognizing that you may have a harder schedule your first and second year for call, but you're able to make that up with such wonderful opportunities to travel during your third and fourth year. We also have an outstanding child and adolescent fellowship program and we have lots of residents every year that choose to fast track to go into our own program, but also those that choose to go elsewhere. We also have incredible leadership opportunities. So like I said, there's always ways that you can serve on different boards throughout the medical campus, especially with ours being so large. It's wonderful to be able to get administrative experience if that is something that you're interested in. We also are in one of the best cities, or one that I like to call uh, the best city in the United States, and one that people don't necessarily always talk about. We're in the Midwest. Uh, we are very reasonably priced, and we have a sense of community. So whether it's uh, being invited over um, to your faculty's house for all holidays or just a, a Friday night celebration, we really care about one another and treat each other with respect. And then if you want to learn more about us, I know that this is a quick and, and very brief rundown of our program, giving you some of the unique elements that we have. We do have a webinar specifically uh, just for our program where you will get an opportunity to ask questions of PGY1s, 2s, 3s, and 4s from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. on Thursday, September 17th. And you can go to our website or our Instagram page, WashUPsych, in order to be able to register for that because we want to ensure sure that through this application process, you are able to get all of your questions answered, learn more about our incredible ECT program um, and all of the other elective opportunities and also get a sense of who we are since this application cycle is so unique and so different. So I'm going to pass it along to Indiana University, a fellow Midwest uh, school and Yena, take it away. Hi, I'm Yana and I'm a PGY2 at Indiana University in Indianapolis. Um, we have eight residents per year. 
Um, feel, feel, feel free to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook for some really fantastic content. Um, and DMs are always welcome with us as well. Um, you can also uh, contact our wonderful program, <laughs> program coordinator, Jeanette Souter, um, with any questions in her emails there above. Next. Um, so I'm going to start with just kind of three aspects of IU Psych. Um, the first is our psychotherapy. So all of our PGY3s um, participate in our academic psychotherapy clinic. Um, we also have a little bit of um, exposure for half days during second year um, and a little bit during our child month during our first year. Um, the cool thing about our clinic is we actually have a room with a two-way mirror. Um, and so supervisors and the other resident that you work with are behind the mirror and will observe your therapy session. Um, and then afterwards, you guys will discuss and talk about it um, and then vice versa. And so it's kind of a cool aspect that we have in our new building. Um, second is research and education. So you can start having dedicated time built into your schedule to pursue any of your interests in research education. And we also have global health as well, though it's less popular, we do have it, um, beginning in PGY2 year. We have really strong ongoing research in uh, TBI, psychotic disorder, alcohol use. Um, a lot of, we have a really strong um, partnership with our neurology program. And so a lot of this is um, neuropsych um, that we have ongoing research in, but we also um, have research in child and adolescent autism spectrum and really integrated care. If you're interested in anything else, we have so many different clinics, including our gender clinic and our first break psychosis clinic that constantly gather research um, that's up for grabs for you to use for research. Um, and then whatever your interest is, we can find you a mentor to help you pursue it. Um, for example, someone this year was really interested in perinatal psych um, psychiatry. So she actually created an OB-GYN elective to work with an OB-GYN hospitalist um, and is gonna see how integrating psychiatric services um, in that setting um, uh, changes or maybe changes outcomes. Um, and so that's kind of a cool thing that we offer. And then the last is our diversity of sites. Uh, we rotate at a lot of different hospitals. It can look kind of daunting at first. Um, VA, University, Eskenazi, Methodist, and Riley. VA, you guys all know about it, um, unique veteran population. Um, university hospitals are tertiary referral centers, so those have a lot of very complex medical cases, and we will do consults there. Eskenazi Hospital, that is our safety net hospital or a county hospital. It has a very large mental health center, including, including um, a dedicated psych ED. We see a lot of refugee populations, a lot of minority populations. We have um, in-house Spanish translators there as well um, because of the population that we see um, and a lot of um, first break psychosis there as well. Um, Methodist Hospital, that's a private sector referral hospital, so a lot of people that have insurance. Um, that's where we do the majority of our ECT training. Um, and we also kind of, it's not in Methodist Hospital, but it's connected to, we have a place called Goodman Hall, and that's where we um, have TMS research going on as well. And then Riley um, is a dedicated children's hospital. We also have a lot of outpatient options. Um, the state hospital, which is our neurodiagnostic center, which was just opened about a year or two ago. Um, and then the Neuroscience Research Institute we work with as well. Next. So a few of my favorite things about my program and about Indianapolis. Um, number one, I kind of alluded to this, is our flexibility. You can really tailor your schedule to all of your interests, whether it's research, education, and global health. Um, we have a dedicated psych emergency room in, um, in Eskenazi, Methodist, and Riley. Um, you'll work there during PGY1, PGY2, and for electives. We also have early exposure to child and adolescent. So we get one month of child and adolescent during our PGY1 year, um, which is kind of a fun um, expo early exposure for people that are interested. Um, for Indianapolis, we have amazing housing options. You can live in the city, in the country, rent own, and it's all really affordable. Um, and then our year-round activities, which I really, really love, um, are, are in the summer, we have outdoor concerts. In the fall, you get to do apple picking. And the, I love the wiener dog races. Those are my favorite. Um, we have our annual holiday party at the zoo. And then there's lots of camping, conventions. This is at Gen Con, which is a board game convention, um, and sporting events, both professional and amateur. So um, join us for our next open house. We have two of them coming up on the 10th and on the 22nd. Um, on the 10th, you can meet our program directors and ask them questions. And on the 22nd, we'll be presenting the different subspecialties and fellowships um, that we have available at IU. Um, and then we are also going to be having kind of a pre-interview season resident session in October as well to answer any of your questions and just kind of get to know you. So next up, we're gonna hear all about the University of Chicago and the Windy City. 
Thanks, Jana. Um, my name is Anjan, and along with Deandra Lucia, who's also on this call, I'm one of the chief residents at the University of Chicago's Adult Psychiatry Residency Program. If you're not interested in applying to our program, you can go to our website. Um, we have a handout there that anyone can download with information, including the structure of our clinical rotations, hospital sites, salaries, and much more information. Also, you can follow us at UChicago Psych. Um, and we're list we've listed our emails for further questions that can't be answered by our website. I'll hand it over to Deandra who can talk about our program more. Hi all. Um, sorry, I look a little bit like a ghost in this video, but that's okay. Uh, so we just wanted to uh, talk about three important facts about our program. Uh, the first one is definitely our patient diversity. So this happens in, uh, for twofold reasons. One is that we have uh, two of our two inpatient psychiatry rotations are at very different uh, points in the city. Uh, one is up north in Evanston, where the population is generally quite affluent, primarily Caucasian. And then our other site is down in the south side, the far south side in Harvey, Illinois, uh, at Ingalls Memorial Hospital, where the population is predominantly African American, and the socioeconomic uh, classes generally uh, much poorer. And so these two different populations are not just demographically different, but then the pathology that we see there is quite different. And you can really uh, see and understand um, the immense impact that racial disparities on access to health care, health literacy, um, you know, lifelong prejudice against these populations, how it really plays a role in um, their overall health uh, and psychopathology as well. Um, additionally, there's a lot of comorbid substance use as well as chronic and violent trauma, community violence in these populations. So um, you really see a large spectrum uh, of uh, different patients and different people, um, as well as the people that you work with in both of the different hospitals, um, which is very, very interesting and educational. And then the other part of how we uh, see a you know a large diversity of patients is that then the, our main hospital uh, being the only tertiary academic center in the south side of Chicago but also being home to the University of Chicago with their undergraduate population their graduate students uh, other residents and attendings that we see um, in our clinic and on our on our services um, we just see a wide variety of folks from all different walks of life and Hyde Park is definitely a very diverse and interesting place to live and work. Um, and then that kind of brings me to our second point um, because we get a lot of our psychotherapy patients from um, the University of Chicago uh, community uh, just because of we, we can only take University of Chicago insurance to try to have an arbitrary way to slim down of what would be a very long wait list for psychotherapy. Um, we do get strong training in both empiric and psychodynamic approaches in psychiatry. Um, so empiric, we have a lot of neuroscience didactics. Uh, we often try to kind of embed neuroscience in the way that we think about psychopathology. Uh, we get a lot of education in psychopharmacology as well as experience in psychopharmacology um, in all of our different clinical services. And then we also have a lot of opportunities for research and residents are definitely encouraged to get involved in research. Uh, and then a third fact about us is that we do have a lot of different specialty clinics. Uh, so just to name a few, geriatrics, eating disorders, community violence and recovery from community violence and trauma associated disorders, um, transplant clinic, a dedicated psychosis clinic, ECT, as well as treatment resistant depression, addictions, dementia, women's mental health, personality disorder and PTSD clinic. LGBTQ clinics, psycho-onc, student counseling, and neuropsych. Um, also some of that in, um, in collaboration with our neurology uh, colleagues. Okay. Thanks, Deandra. Um, next, I'll talk about our favorite things about UChicago. First and foremost, we have a familial atmosphere here. We only have six residents per class, which means that we collaborate within classes a lot and we all hang out. Um, and we also have faculty who are really approachable. Um, the second thing is that we have really good work-life balance. So all call in third and fourth year is optional for moonlighting money, which 
is really great. Um, we have a lot of weekends off unless you want to make extra cash to put towards student debt and it really, really helps. Um, we also have a process group during which residents can talk about anything with a group therapist who is not part of our faculty. So it feels like you can really talk about anything and celebrate things together. Um, we have two half day retreats a year as well as a full day retreat. So we get a lot of time together when the faculty can cover um, our services and we can hang out. And then living in Chicago is a blast. Um, Sorry. All right, time out. <laughs> all right, let me hand it over to MUSC. All right. Um, I'm Melvin Thomas. I'm one of the chief residents at MUSC. Let me turn on the video. That should help. Uh, one of the chief residents uh, at MUSC in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, I promise I don't normally sound like this. I lost my voice a couple of days ago, but it's coming back. Um, you can see our information there. Follow us on Instagram at MUSC Psych Residencies or on Twitter uh, at MUSC Psych GME. Um, and I've got my email address there if anybody wants to get in contact with me. Uh, next slide. All right, so a few facts about our program. Um, one of the first ones, a, a few of the programs have mentioned research focus. And uh, if research is something that you're interested in, there's plenty of opportunities at MUSC. The program certainly doesn't push you to do research. It's not something that I'm particularly interested in. But if you are interested, there's a research track in our third and fourth year uh, where you get paired with a mentor. It guarantees protected time for you to work on your project. And there's a certain degree of loan forgiveness uh, that's offered as well with that. So uh, there's quite a few residents that will take that up. Um, another thing that I think is real special is our brain stimulation program. We got one of the strongest brain stimulation programs in the country. Residents are able to work with uh, pretty well-known faculty um, in ET, TMS, do research there, clinical electives there. Um, and there's also an unofficial brain stimulation fellowship uh, that's offered every few years that we've had quite a few residents participate in as well. And then, like a lot of the other uh, programs I've talked about, we have quite a few clinical elective opportunities. Um, if it's something that you're interested in, there's almost definitely going to be a clinic or clinical experience that you can um, have in it. Uh, a few of the most notable ones include reproductive psychiatry, HIV psychiatry, forensics, a first responders clinic that I'm doing this year. Uh, but it really extends out to, to all sorts of other things. Um, next slide. So, talking about the things that I love about USC and about Charleston, um, it's really only choose five things. I, I tried to pick a few of the things that I typically talk to applicants in interviews about. Uh, one of the first things and one of the things that really drew me to MUSC is that it's one of the largest programs in the country. So we have 17 interns per year. That's 14 categorical, two med psych and neuro psych. And so that's another big thing that I, I think is special about MUSC is our neuro psych residency program and med psych residency program, which allow us to have really, really close relationships with our medicine colleagues and our neurology colleagues. And both the medicine department and the neurology department here at MUSC are fantastic. So that's something we love. Uh, the big program allows you to have quite a different people that you can spend time with socially, but also clinically. Uh, makes it pretty easy to switch call shifts, vacation days, um, weekends, things like that. Um, I'll actually jump to the third point on here, just based off of that, is the fact that you have a night float schedule for call your first two years. So as opposed to being on call every three or four um, nights or something like that, we actually uh, have night float for all of months in the first year and in the second year. And outside of that, when you have vacation, as opposed to being a block of five vacation days in a row a few times a year, you can use vacation days a little bit more flexibly, especially when you're in your psychiatry month. So you can take one day off if you just want to take a three-day weekend and go someplace, or you can take five days off in a row and, and travel back home or travel out of the country, whatever it is that you want to do. So that's really contributed to wellness and, and quality of life and being able to sort of do things the way that you're hoping to do them. We've got an extensive list of fellowships. Um, that really allows for us to have a breadth of training experiences that coupled with us being a large program in general, like I said, really allows you to uh, be able to find somebody to uh, do it in or somebody to talk to as far as mentoring goes. Um, and then as far as the city itself, uh, Charleston is a beautiful city for any of you that have not been here. Uh, we've been the number one city in the country by travel and leisure for seven years, including this year. Uh, we've got a beautiful historic downtown, and it's surrounded by a bunch of smaller beach towns. Um, and all of our cities have terrific restaurants, bars, breweries, coffee shops, 
Um, and with the weather being pretty warm year round, I mean, it doesn't really know here. It can get somewhat cold in the winters, but generally it's pretty hot. Um, it's great for all sorts of outdoor events, uh, seating, sorts of activities. If you want to do things with other people on your own, uh, there's never a shortage of things to do. The restaurants here are fantastic. Um, there's a million more things that I could say about Charleston and about MUSC, um, but either feel free to contact us, follow us on social media, like I mentioned, or site residency at muc.edu to sign up for our virtual hangouts. Uh, those are going to be happening every Wednesday evening, September, and we've got the full schedule up on our Instagram. Uh, and with that, we'll turn it over to UAMS. <laughs> Great. Hi everyone, I'm Katie Maskery. I'm the Chief Resident for UAMS, or the University of Arkansas for Medical Science. Um, below is our contact information, so please be sure to write down um, our Instagram handle at UAMS underscore psych res. Uh, pictured here is our part of our campus, and actually couldn't fit it in entirely. Uh, what you'll see over to the left star is Arkansas State Hospital, which is located right on our campus as well as the middle star being our Psychiatric Research Institute. And then just off to the screen to the right where the star is would be our VA Medical Center. Next. So three facts about UAMS is one, our psychotherapy is really just self-designed. We start doing a half day of psychotherapy per week, starting in our PGY2 year for about six months and then continue it during our third and fourth year. We have pretty much all the psychotherapy modalities offered. It's just about finding what MD or PhD you would like to work with to see what type you would like to learn. As far as our, car, our call schedule, we are a bit very busy call service as we cover our PRI inpatient psych unit, that's 30 beds, the UAMS ED and VA ED, and our UAMS and VA floor consults. So we cover five. Um, with that though, our interns are on a hip-to-hip -hip system, and so when you're on short call as an intern, you are with an upper level resident from July to January. And then on long calls that are 12 hours on the weekends, you're always with an upper level. We do have a night float system and that's covered by a PGY2. So pretty much as an intern, you don't do any overnights and you're mostly with an upper level. We also have a very easy like holiday schedule where we have just our intern do one minor holiday as a PGY1 and then our PGY2s either do one major or two minor holidays. We also um, have multiple different research opportunities available at UAMS as we have five different divisions of research just located at PRI or again our Psychiatric Research Institute. Uh, we have the Center for Addiction Research which is kind of self-explanatory. We have the Brain Imaging Research Center that, that involves neuroimaging to look at um, different behaviors um, with looking at addiction and effects of trauma. We also have the Great Women's Mental Health Program that has an emphasis on looking at um, substance use during pregnancy, as well as we have our Neurocognitive Dynamics Laboratory, which looks at the brain from a mesoscopic level using different imaging modalities. They particularly look at sleep and the transition into that, and then Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Then last, we have our Center for Health Services Research, which looks at kind of the global area and adapts um, interventions to help people with mental illness and substance use disorders. Next. Okay, and then five things about UAMS and Little Rock that are my favorite. One is that our program really offers a diverse psychiatric population, as when we're rotating at UAMS, we are at three different sites. We're at the Arkansas State Hospital, where we're able to see forensic and involved uh, involuntary civil commitment patients. And then at the PRI, which is um, located on our main, you know, main campus and is attached to the main hospital there in the middle, um, we are able to see acute inpatient patients for, from all over the, the state. And then the VA, which is our military veteran population. We also have a very united culture that's very family and friendly oriented where we spend a lot of time with our attendings and social gatherings. Um, we also have multiple professional advancement opportunities at UAMS, as we offer four fellowships, those being forensics, geriatrics, 
addiction medicine, and child and adolescent psychiatry. We also have a lot of external moonlighting opportunities, as well as a resident academic track that allows for, in, for interns and then um, to start getting interest into doing um, research or um, academic psychiatry in their second year and then potentially following that afterwards. Um, one of the other things that I really love about Arkansas is the low cost of living. Um, you know, we have residents that have houses or even have pools, and the average um, price for a home in Arkansas and Little Rock is 158000 so it's very easy to afford a home or live in a luxury apartment here. Um, other favorite quality about Arkansas is just the fact that it is the natural state. We have over 52 state parks and over 30 large lakes that allow for a multitude of outdoor activities to be done. Um, so we will be having our own virtual open house on September 22nd. So please feel free to follow us on our Instagram page for more information. That's at UAMS underscore psych res for more information. And now we'll hand it off to Atrium Health. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. Hi, everyone. My name is April and I'm Chief Resident of the Sandra and Leon Levine Psychiatry Residency Program. We are named after our largest benefactor, and we actually belong to Atrium Health, which is our nation's 10th largest private hospital system in the country. So if you're looking for us on Frida or ERAS, you're going to find us listed under Carolina's Medical Center Psychiatry, which is the largest hospital in our healthcare system. Uh, to remind you of how to find us on Instagram or Twitter, you can just find us at CMC Psychiatry. We are a newish program. Uh, we're gonna be graduating our first class this year of which I'm a part. So if you choose to join us at CMC Psychiatry, your creative input and feedback will be instrumental in shaping our growing program. I've included uh, the contact information for our program director and our associate program director as well as my contact information there if you wanna contact us for further information or questions. Uh, next. So these are three fun facts about CMC psychiatry. So the first one that I wanted to share with you is that as our, uh, as the largest private hospital system in the Southeast, uh, the residency programs at CMC psychiatry actually started out as community-based programs, but by no means are equivalent to what you might envision for a community-based program. I want you to understand really the scope of the system so that you can appreciate the potential opportunities that you'll be exposed to when you're training here. So Atrium Health provides a full spectrum of healthcare and wellness programs throughout North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Um, we're the largest provider of mental health and substance abuse services in the entire Carolinas. Um, while we do have medical, well, we actually don't have a medical school yet, um, we do still work with medical students. So we're a training site for University of North Carolina, who I think we're gonna hear from later on. Um, Atrium is continuing to grow and we're actually in the process of partnering with Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center to build a medical school here in Charlotte, which will bring even more academic and teaching rigor to CMC. Second fun fact there is that we have the only freestanding psychiatric emergency department in the region, which you'll get to rotate through during your first year of residency. Uh, this is an extremely valuable and memorable experience um, as the highlight of the PGY1 year and definitely a favorite for all of our residents. Third fun fact is that we have a reasonable call schedule. So our call schedule fosters graduated learning opportunities to promote resident autonomy uh, decision making and development of time management skills in order to prepare you for attending life. Um, however, it also respects your time, allowing for some of the most rewarding work life balance of any program around. Uh, we value physician well being and we will help you to preserve your wellness. Uh, for example, our interns average about 51 hours per week. So this gives you ample opportunity to enjoy the benefits of training here at CMC and then also allows you to develop your own individual interests, research, relationships. Um, for those of you with families, um, our, our program is home to 13 children and like twice that amount of fur babies. So once again, we place a really high value on work-life balance here at CMC. Um, bringing me to the highlights of our program. Next slide, please. 
I wanted to take a moment to just highlight our faculty, um, other unique opportunities that we have here, our emphasis on diversity, outdoor life, and then of course, Charlotte. Uh, the faculty are heavily invested in our success because they literally helped to create the program that we have today. Um, they each brought about the best of their individual training experiences and then are recreating that here in our state-of-the-art program. Um, our faculty are kind and patient and collegial. And because we have a really small group of residents, you'll spend most of your time working one-on-one -on -one with our faculty members to hone your skills. We have lots of unique opportunities here, not just our psychiatric emergency department, of course, you know, everything from consultation liaison um, with adults, with children, addiction psychiatry, robust brain stimulation, um, psychotherapy, of course, is the emphasis of our program, and then lots of different partial, opportunity, partial hospital opportunities as well. We also have a lot of emphasis on behavioral health integration and collaborative care, uh, if that's something that you're interested in. Diversity. Uh, the third thing I wanted to emphasize is that at Atrium Health, our culture of inclusion and emphasis on cultural competence allows us to deliver the best possible experience to our patients and the communities that we serve. Our residents are welcomed for their diverse worldviews and uh, the value that they bring to our program and the community. Um, our Department of Psychiatry is at the forefront of Atrium Health Diversity Programs because our Associate Program Director, Dr. Villanueva, actually hosts the annual LGBTQ Healthcare Symposium every year that educates sorry providers. Um, I'm sorry? Sorry to cut you off. No problem, Melvin. Hi, everyone. My name my name's Sita. I am a PGY4 at the University of Utah. Apologies for having my camera off. Unfortunately, we had some very atypical wild weather today, so my Wi-Fi connection is a little fragile. Um, our first slide, this is our training team. Our program director is Dr. Carlson. We have three associate program directors, Dr. Burris, Dr. Lundberg, and Dr. Rodarski. Our best point of contact is our incredible program manager, Jamie Christensen. I'll have her information at the last slide too. Um, next. So three things to know about our program. We have a lot of educational opportunities. We have two dedicated tracks. One is uh, the Idaho track, which just got started. It's focused on rural psychiatry and serving underserved areas. The other is a research track. We also have four concentrations, which are focused areas of study within the residency. These are community mental health, global mental health, neuropsychiatry, and women's mental health. And in the department has two fellowship programs, addiction psychiatry and child and adolescent. A really neat thing about our program is that we have a full day of didactics every week, and that is all throughout residency. It's protected time, so you have no clinical responsibilities. And apart from just being a really great uh, opportunity to learn, it's also a chance for everyone to touch base with all our fellow residents. Our psychotherapy training starts in second year. You uh, pick up a patient or two and obviously get supervision, but at the end of the year, you meet with Dr. Lundberg and you um, are able to do psychotherapy mapping and uh, just assess your interests, uh, because, which is great because we have a lot of uh, outpatient psychotherapy elective opportunities above ACGME requirements. Next. So five things to love about our program. Utah is an amazing state, uh, especially if you're into outdoors things. I was very indoorsy until I moved here, um, but it's really beautiful and there's so much to take advantage of. There are five national parks here. Moab, which has arches and Canyonlands National Parks, is just four hours away. Closer to home, we've got hiking trails that start behind our hospital. And if you're into skiing, apparently we have some amazing snow here. Um, and you can be on the slopes within 45 minutes of being done with work. Salt Lake City is kind of a hidden gem. I didn't know what to expect when I moved here, but there's a lot going on. Um, 
there's a huge booming craft brewery scene. There's a lot of, so lots of breweries, lots of coffee shops. We have really great concert series in the summer and there's a lot of bands that stop here on their way west, which is pretty cool. I've seen more concerts here than anywhere else actually. Um, our program is really flexible, which is great. You have the opportunity to start doing electives your third year. You can have up to two and a half days of elective time in your PGY3 year. Um, you can also create electives if there's something that interests you. The program is really supportive of that. We also have a very flexible vacation day policy. So you can take those days piecemeal if you would like. And uh, that's really nice to give yourself three or four day weekends and spread it out throughout the year. Our program is also very supportive, encourage you to, encourages you to follow your career goals and educational interests. That's why we have four concentrations. Um, residents have expressed interest in these uh, kind of subspecialty focused areas of interest and the program has um, helped us uh, develop that. Never worry alone is an unofficial motto. Everyone's got an open door. Um, everyone is really collegial and warm, and that's what really sold me on the program. If you would like to know more, please sign up for our webinars that we will have in September. Sign up at bit.ly slash Utah Psychiatry. Our program co coordinator contact is jamie.christensen at hsc.utah.edu, and um, our Instagram handle is at Utah Psych Residency. Thank you guys so much. Good luck with everything. And next up is University of Virginia. Hey, everybody. So I'm Ira. I'm a PGY2 from University of Virginia. Um, as you can see, we're pretty easy to get a hold of. Our email address is just psychresidency at virginia.edu. And our Instagram is UVA Psychiatry. So feel free to hit us up. Um, next. OK. Three things to know about us. Um, for those of you who are psychotherapy focused, beyond an informal kind of introduction during intern year, um, you will get formally taught supportive psychotherapy during your PGY2 year. And you'll pick up one to two patients, see them weekly, and then carry them forward throughout the residency. Um, you'll also have more opportunities during your outpatient years of PGY3, um, where you'll be taught CBT, DBT, psychodynamic, um, you know, expressive. You'll be able to lead groups in men's and women's therapy. Um, and you can also carry this forward as well as a PGY4 during electives. Um, as far as research is concerned, we are an academic institution, so stuff exists, um, but we do consider ourselves pretty clinically focused. Um, the areas that we do have research in are women's health, very much so, um, addiction, and child and adolescent psychiatry. Um, there's always opportunities to kind of work on things that work for you, whether it's a QI project or writing up a case study, or for instance, one of my cohort is going into past life regressive therapy research. So believe it or not, something always pops up. And then lastly, the call schedule. Um, so we are a front-loaded CL heavy program. Um, you'll get meal money um, as an intern and going forward, depending on how many nights you do. Um, so your intern year, you're gonna have your most number of nights. Um, they're only done during psych consult blocks. Um, and then when you're off service during one of your medicine blocks, um, maybe a few shifts in the ED and then the possibility of one week in neurology. Um, you're always paired with an upper level, so you're never left alone. Um, and then as a PGY2, you're that upper level. Um, as a PGY3 and 4, there's no overnight call. You will just cover some weekend days and then some of the time when PGY2s are going to didactics in order to kind of help protect that time for others. Um, next. And then lastly, the five things I love about our program. First, the engagement with the local community. Um, we are a program that actively seeks out small businesses to partner with. Um, we try to be patrons of and uplift local farms, um, black and indigenous people of color owned businesses, um, you know, shops that have been owned for generations. Um, I think that leads me directly into what we stand for. Um, so while Charlottesville might be infamous in its own right, our program is big on protecting us and encouraging us to make ourselves heard, whether it's protesting injustice, fighting for equity for our patient populations, even getting out there and vote. Um, our program was also really immediate in terms of finding ways to protect us when the pandemic kind of, you know, set on in for all of us. Um, so they made sure that we stayed safe. Um, thirdly, kind of coming down to the right corner here, the numerous opportunities are really what drew me to this program. Um, there's a global mental health track with international rotations. There's ECT, TMS, ketamine, um, you know, office-based opioid treatment. There's refugee and torture clinics. Um, there's Clinica Latina, um, toxicology, college counseling, you name it, we pretty much have it. Um, so it's a great place to kind of grow through these opportunities. 
All of this could not be possible without our wonderful PC and PD. They're here in our left corner. Our program coordinator is Laura. She sent us these adorable kind of not work emails. So whether this week it's an image of like funny baby goats or whether it's, you know, new masks that she made for us, she is truly the glue of our program. And Dr. Damron, our program director, is just the kindest, gentlest soul. Um, he has said often that his goal is not to create cookie cutter psychiatrists, but to allow you to develop your voice. Um, I know during my interview, we spent a good chunk of time talking about Batman, so for that, I will love him forever. And then lastly, you can see in the center, the residents are the heart of our program. Um, we have an incredibly diverse resident group. Um, our current intern group is about 60% people of color. Our PGY2 class is 50%. Um, we have GLBTQIA and non-binary representation. We have people from every background, MD, IMG, DO. Um, and we have people who have couples matched, people who are single and bought a house, um, people who've had kids, adopted dogs, um, you know, you name it, everybody's here. We even have one guy who was a full-on ED attending, then decided to go back and do a psychiatry residency and join us. Um, so yeah, whoever you are, you're going to be welcome here and you're going to be supported. And I know that all of you guys are just, you know, joining this to kind of suss out what works for you. So I hope no matter where you wind up, that you find a place that fits you and that you feel good at it. And, you know, maybe when you're here in the best of ways, you can find out like I did, that it truly never hurts to bet on Batman. So <laughs> with that, I will let you guys kind of continue on. I'm going to pass things over to Bryce, who's representing Mount Sinai. Thanks, you guys. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Bryce Reynolds, Chief Resident and Director of Recruitment at Mount Sinai Hospital. Uh, there's my email there and uh, our Instagram also at Sinai Psych Res. Antonia and Asher are our PDs who are basically just our parents. Uh, next. So uh, at Mount Sinai, uh, there are abundant research opportunities. Uh, I'm still surprised at that ranking, number four in the country for NIH funding for a psychiatry program. Uh, dedicated tracks for research, mentors, we have a partnership with the Friedman Brain Institute, which focuses on neuroscience, and we're connected directly to the medical school. Uh, if research isn't your passion, uh, and if you don't put your name on a single paper in residency, then you too can someday rise to be chief resident anyway, like me. I, I didn't focus on research at all, but uh, if, if you're interested, the opportunities are immense. Uh, we've got a very diverse patient population at 100th Street and Madison Avenue on the Upper East Side, uh, right on the border of East Harlem. About half of our patients come from the Dominican and Puerto Rican communities in East Harlem. Uh, and then we've got a substantial minority of aging millionaires from the Upper East Side, students, members of the Orthodox Jewish community, and people from all over the world who come to us for treatment. And for outpatient treatment, uh, as psychiatry moves more and more to an outpatient model, we thought it was really important to add more outpatient experiences that includes six months of outpatient in PGY2 at the VA and a full year of outpatient work in PGY3, as well as additional uh, electives throughout PGY2, 3, and 4 as needed in whatever subspecialty that you like. Next. Uh, what we love. Uh, so everybody loves the people in their residency. I, I truly believe that. That's, I think that's true of every residency. Uh, there's nothing about our people that's objectively more lovable, but somehow there's just some alchemy that happens every year that puts together the program directors manage to recruit a group of amazing people who just really blend. Um, I have to give an example of this, uh, something I always tell residents in an interview. One of my co-residents was planning her wedding in PGY2, trying to figure out a date that would work for all of us. She figured out one date, New Year's Eve, in Detroit, since that was where her family was. She asked us if she was crazy, if she was being like completely wild to try and ask us to come to her wedding in Detroit on New Year's Eve, and we were thrilled to do it. It uh, ended up being more than half of our class, about nine people flew to Detroit on New Year's Eve. And uh, one of my favorite weddings and one of my favorite New Year's Eves of all time, uh, just as one example of, of how we get along. Uh, New York City, we live in New York. Central Park's our backyard. The train to upstate, the mountains and apple orchards is pictured as right around the corner. New York has definitely had a very hard spring with COVID, but it's now one of the safest places in the country. Uh, we've all been drawn together as a city and as a medical community, and there's truly nowhere else I'd rather be right now. Uh, this picture is obviously pre-pandemic, but uh, the shot before of bikes in the park was just last month. Uh, the city is absolutely coming back to life. Uh, next, our uh, 
PD support and flexibility, they're extremely responsive to Tourism concerns. The elective expansions that are taking place in PGY2 and PGY3 are in direct response to concerns that were raised, uh, just asking for more exposure to child psychiatry earlier in residency. As soon as that was raised, our associate program director, Osher, sent out emails to just about every cool attending in the Sinai system and set up a whole new curriculum within a month, which is a pretty typical response from our leadership. In terms of therapy, New York is a very unique place to learn therapy, but it's also a great place to get therapy. Um, all of us have access to our own therapy through Sinai's networks. The vast majority of our residents are in therapy for no out-of-pocket out cost at all. Uh, I've been in therapy now for three years, going twice a week, and it's been one of the most valuable parts of the education, uh, which also speaks to the work-life balance that we have. Uh, we're all really excited about each other's lives outside the hospital. We have time for our own lives, our own families, our own therapy. Uh, I've been to see my colleagues dance recitals, cello performances, ultimate frisbee games, cheese nights, um, karaoke masterpieces, and some of my co-residents have been kind enough to come to my improv performances. Uh, we love to hear about your weird hobbies and thrilled by your uniqueness beyond just your psychiatric abilities. Uh, and we'd love to get to know you. So follow us on Instagram, uh, shoot me an email anytime. And with that, I'll hand it over to our sister program, uh, Adele at Mount Sinai Beth Israel. Thank you, Bryce. So my name is Adele and I'm one of the chief residents here at Mount Sinai Beth Israel. Feel free to follow us on Instagram. Um, our hospital is located in the East Village of Manhattan. Um, for those of you not familiar, um, we are in Lower Manhattan. We take 13 residents per year, and our program director is Dr. Daniel Safin. Our associate program director is Dr. Elizabeth Casasnobas, and our lovely program coordinator is Kanisha Felix. And uh, feel free to reach out to Kanisha if you have any further questions after our talk. All right, next. So some facts about Mount Sinai Beth Israel. First, we have a very comprehensive psychotherapy training experience that really takes off during the second year. We're trained in many different psychotherapy modalities. We've listed some here, psychodynamics, CBT, supportive, family, child and adolescent, um, group and DBT. Um, as a current PGY4, I feel so confident in the psychotherapy training that I've received at Mount Sinai Beth Israel. Um, I feel like it, it really is a strength of our program. Um, second, there are many research opportunities available to our residents. Um, I personally am involved with research in forensic psychiatry, um, but there are many other domains in which you could do research. Um, we, a lot of our residents do addiction psychiatry research, um, CL psychiatry projects. Um, Mount Sinai Beth Israel does a lot of suicide prevention research. Um, many of our residents present at conferences nationwide and are published prior to graduation. Um, we at Mount Sinai Beth Israel also collaborate with um, the Mount Sinai Hospital and Mount Sinai West and Morningside. So we very much have a group to be connected with in the field um, at the Icon School of Medicine, which we are all a part of. Um, and then third are didactics. So just to briefly mention, so during PGY one year, um, the didactics are divided into modules that focus on different topics. So some of the topics include psychosis, mood disorders, personality disorders, anxiety, things like that. And then within a module, um, the topics focus on psycho farm, psychopathology, interviewing skills, et cetera. Um, during PGY2, didactics focus on specialty courses in a lot of the areas that I mentioned um, in the PGY1 training. And then in PGY3, um, the focus is uh, further divided into therapy modality. So we learn a, a majority of our psychotherapy training is during the third year. And we have inter, uh, individual and group supervision. And then during fourth year, it's um, sort of a hodgepodge of, of learning um, very, very important topics though, like board review. Um, right now we just finished some professional, de professional development lectures, um, therapy modalities. So um, and also interspersed with group and individual supervision. Next. All right, so why Mount Sinai Beth Israel? So on my interview day at Mount Sinai Beth Israel, I was blown away by the sense of community that there is at our program. Um, 
I am originally from a very small town in West Virginia. So when I came to Mount Sinai Beth Israel, my interview day, I was really taken aback by how close everybody was. And even though we are in one of the largest cities in the world in New York, um, still everyone it, it just felt like a small family. And so that was really important to me. Um, and it really promotes a, a strong learning environment, in my opinion. Um, a lot of our faculty also did residency at the program, which to me said, you know, they must have really valued their training here. That, that's a really positive thing um, that I saw in my interview day. Um, let's see, second, our location. Um, I love the East Village, that's where we're at. We're down on 16th Street and First Avenue. Um, the East Village has a ton of things to do, so many nice restaurants, um, things to see, um, such a fun area. I love living here. Um, there's many opportunities to assume leadership roles at Mount Sinai Beth Israel. Um, there are many committees that you can be involved with, even starting during PGY-1. Um, during PGY-1 and 2, you, you can become involved with the um, residency recruitment process. Um, you're able to start interviewing applicants during PGY-2, which I did a lot of. I really like to do things like that. Um, number four, we have a diverse, robust training experience. Um, like I mentioned before, we get a lot of um, exposure to psychotherapy training and others in our didactics, but we also focus on resident wellness. Um, we, in our program, each resident gets one wellness day per quarter that you're able to use um, for anything that you would like, um, appointments, personal obligations, um, and it really, whoop, thank you. And with that, uh, UNC. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Sarah B. I am a third year resident at UNC. Um, that's our Instagram handle. We are a brand new Instagram account. We just started last month, but hoping to pick up and add a lot more resident stories to our page. Um, our program director is Karen Dawkins. She's a phenomenal human being. And then our associate program director, uh, Winston Lee, is actually a pretty recent graduate. Um, he graduated about two years ago from our residency program. Uh, so it's neat having him um, involved in our uh, curriculum as well. Next slide. So um, kind of the three main highlights that I wanted to go through, psychotherapy. So our um, therapy stuff starts second year. We our entire second year is actually outpatient, um, interspersed, interspersed with a few call shifts, but um, the bulk of our outpatient training actually starts during second year. Um, we get individual supervisors for both CBT and psychodynamic, so um, we get protected time to be able to meet with them. Um, and our didactics during second year are um, all therapy oriented, so we really get into the nitty gritty of both dynamic and CBT. Um, during our uh, PGY2 year, we have um, half days, so um, we, you get a total of three half days that are dedicated to therapy, so like Monday morning, Tuesday afternoon, Friday morning, um, those are the slots that you get to uh, schedule all your therapy patients and meet with your supervisor, so there's a lot of um, time and opportunities for therapy. Research, so lots of research opportunities. Um, UNC is an, an outstanding institution for um, research, especially in psychiatry. Um, research is encouraged among residents, and we do have a separate research track. Um, so you do get protected time to do research if you're on that track. Didactics, um, also protected time. So every Wednesday afternoon, regardless of what year you are or what rotation you're on, if you're an intern on neurology, Wednesday afternoon you have that time that's protected um, for didactics, which is really nice. Um, some people, some residents will also be able to kind of like squeeze in their like doctor's appointments and regular life stuff into that time because we'll get breaks um, on those Wednesday afternoons. So it's nice to be able to have that to kind of count on once a week. Uh, next slide. So um, lots of reasons why UNC is great. Um, these are some of the ones that stood out to me when I was applying. So um, UNC's hospital actually has seven uh, different inpatient psychiatric units. So we have a child unit, a separate adolescent unit, a separate eating disorders unit, a perinatal psychiatry unit, a geriatric psychiatry unit, a crisis stabilization unit, and a psychotic disorders unit. So these are all standalone units with um, their own number of beds 
the number of beds varies per unit, but averages from like 10 to 15. Um, so we've got a lot of different units and you get to rotate through um, all of them uh, as a resident, which is really neat. Um, something else that stood out to me was that you get exposed to child and adolescent psych pretty early on. Um, so during your intern year, you do an entire month on the adolescent unit, which is cool, um, especially for people who are trying to decide whether or not they want to do child. Um, you get to experience that pretty early. Um, early integration of outpatient training. So like I mentioned before, you actually start outpatient during your second year. Um, which is uh, pretty unique about our program. There's a huge emphasis on education and teaching. So we have a separate clinician educator track, which I'm a part of. Um, and during that, uh, in that track, you, you get, once again, protected time to um, learn how to teach. So we've got people um, across the hospital giving us lectures and seminars, teaching us how to teach. Um, and then you also get to implement it working with the medical students and tutoring them and, um, it's a, it's a very uh, neat experience being a part of that track. Um, the Triangle, uh, that's what we call Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. It's a great place to live. Um, I am from Salt Lake City, Utah, so I completely moved across the country um, and I've just loved living here in Chapel Hill. Um, we brag that we're about two hours away from both the beach and the mountains, so we're kind of halfway. Um, pick a direction and you get to experience some pretty neat things. Um, so, uh, my email address was on that first slide, so definitely reach out to me if you have any questions and follow us on Instagram. And uh, with that, I will pass it along to Harvard South Shore. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Anderson Chen. I'm a PGY3 at Harvard South Shore. Um, our Instagram handle is at HSS Psychiatry and same for Twitter as well. I have about five minutes today to kind of share why I, I love my program and chose my program. If we could go to the next slide, please. Um, so basically, when I started looking into residency programs, I wanted to find a program that I could uh, succeed in no matter which direction I went, because I didn't know if I wanted to do child and adolescent psychiatry or geriatrics or academia or private practice. So I really because the, the, the environment wasn't there in medical school for me to really know. Uh, so I chose a place where the, the exposure is very strong no matter where I went. Um, so here at Harvard South Shore, we leverage resources from the VA. Boston VA is very strong, very unique. Harvard system, which involves many different hospital systems, and the Department of Mental Health Resources, which is the State Department. Um, this really results in a very robust training. Um, you know different healthcare systems you know different practicing settings. Um, it's a complete different socioeconomic status that we see um, as we travel through the different healthcare system. So when I graduate, I'll feel very comfortable knowing what kind of patient population I, I feel uh, happiest uh, when, when I'm treating. Um, when we start the program, we actually get a lot of textbooks. Um, and a lot of textbooks are actually written by our own faculty. And it's really nice to talk to them, share with what you think, they can point you towards the next step. Um, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is our program is very horizontal. Everyone's really accessible. That's true going from residents all the way uh, to program directors. Um, our, our program also really values um, your well-being. So we have a very, very nice uh, uh, timely policy. Basically, we don't have set amount of times so when you have to take time off. Um, you just have to request on the 15th of the month prior. So let's say I want to take August 2nd off. I can request it before July 15th and I can take that time off. We also have sick leave. It accrues one every month and it can also roll over to the year after. Um, we also have a very nice maternal and paternal uh, leave policy. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have an internal moonlighting system that was implemented this year so that PGY1s uh, never have to take call on Sundays. Um, Everyone has at least two day, a day off in the week, regardless of the rotation. It really should be two days off if you are, are not on, on call. Um, our call is all psych psychiatry call, no matter which rotation you're on, um, which is really nice. Basically, our program really focuses on the things that, that you need to learn um, related to psychiatry. Our patient population is very complex. Um, we have patients traveling from all over the country, all over the world to come to see us. So our, our work hours are very reasonable, very nice, but a lot of times when we go home, 
that's uh, when the work starts. That's when we really read about these different types of cases. What do we do? And frequently this then result, uh, results into scholarly work. Um, I think our program, we tend to attract people who are kind, curious, and really passionate about psychiatry and can really take advantage of the nice flexibility that we have of the work-life balance that, that we do have. Um, and as you go forward uh, with uh, learning in residency, you know what you don't know and you want to fix that. So a part of it is, is, is bringing yourself into the team, into the residency, and you can help develop the teaching curriculum development. And it actually goes beyond that. You can help recraft uh, different rotations. If you feel like there's one that might be stronger, we have the program evaluation committee that meets regularly. Um, but we, you know, we just started a class where we have psychiatrists from different fields to come in, talk with us, you know, was fellowship important for that position or not? Did they wish they did something different? So this is a new course. So constantly trying to, to reflect the, the teaching to what's being needed these days. Um, if we could go to the next slide. Um, so this is my favorite point about our program. Uh, the people is amazing. Uh, it's, it's all family here. Um, Boston in general is a, is a very nice place to live. There's usually something uh, for yourself or your spouse, uh, indoors, outdoors. The New England area in general is very accessible, very beautiful. So again, I think the main thing about our program is we're really flexible and um, everyone here is really passionate, kind and curious. Uh, so with that, I'll pass it over to Simone because I'm at the five minute mark. Okay, everybody. So we are going to do a brief question answer. We got some fantastic questions submitted to us from some of you. And so every program is assigned a question. And uh, I will start off with Wash U. Every program will get one minute to answer the question. And then we will have some concluding remarks and we will be sure to end by eight o'clock. And so the question that was posed to Washington University was, how did you guys adapt to the pandemic? So that's a fantastic question, especially when you have new residents starting um, and we want to make them feel included and a part of our community. Uh, so what we did is our program director and assistant program director met with us very frequently to keep us updated on what was going on and where we could be pulled in terms of where we were interested in, if we had interest in serving on medicine or serving in other roles, what our comfort levels were in regards to that. And we also planned a lot of outdoor activities. Last week, we had a pure, uh, free pure bar class uh, in St. Louis at Forest Park, which was super fun. We were all six feet apart, and it was wonderful to be able to get together outside and do something for wellness, but also, also something that we all enjoyed. I'm going to pass it along to Indiana. Yeah, so my question was, um, with the modifications to the residency application cycle, um, any recommendations for expressing interest in our program? Um, so this is really tough because um, this is all new for all of us. Um, things you can do is, you know, feel free to reach out to residents. Um, we don't decide who is interviewed or who's chosen for an interview, um, but we do have access to people um, that do, and resident feedback is a large part of our interview and ranking process. Um, you can also reach out to program coordinators with the information that's available, um, which ours is very happy to answer any questions from anybody who reaches out. Um, if you have any ties or specific reasons you like a program, you can modify your personal statement to include it or just put it somewhere in your application and we do look at that. Um, and if you don't get an interview from a place that you like but you also don't get a rejection, um, you can consider sending maybe a personalized email expressing why you like the program and your interest in it. Um, that's just something that I did last year that worked out well. Um, if you do get the interview, do your homework and use specific reasons why you like it. Um, and our program also offers a second look on demand, which maybe we can figure out virtually this year as well. Um, and send thank you letters after your interviews. Um, those are all ways that you can kind of express your interest. Next um, up, Chicago. So we got a question about how you Chicago maintains its commitment to diversity and inclusion. And this is a very good question. So I want to thank whoever asked it. Um, first and foremost, I want to point out that Chicago is our, our University of Chicago is on the south side of Chicago and most of our patients are predominantly black and issues of racism definitely affect how our patients access and receive care. 
Um, a few of our residents this year took the lead and developed a new curriculum for the entire residency called the Racial Justice Series, during which we learn about the history of racial tension in Chicago, issues of race in psychiatry, and share our clinical experiences. We're there to learn together and start a discussion um, and learn from each other. As a department, our chair has also been scheduling more grand rounds talks on the topic of race, structural competency, and health disparities. And he's also formed a DEI committee dedicated to community outreach specifically. Um, and so with that, I'll pass it over to MUSC. Hey, so uh, the question we got asked was, what is the greatest strength of our program? Uh, what is one weakness? Um, so some of this I've talked about already. I think our biggest strength is probably our size, which really gives us uh, both the breadth uh, of experiences and mentors, but also a large group of residents, people who are not you know, from South Carolina, from Charleston, being able to come here uh, and have such a large group of people um, to socialize with, to work with, um, have them on clinical rotations to help cover weekends and call shifts and things like that, I think is really great. And it was uh, definitely one of the things that continues to stand about our program. As far as weaknesses go, I mean, I personally think Charleston is a great city and that it's a strength, but if people are not from the South and are not used to the weather or, or sort of the way things are in the South, that can be a little bit boring for people at first. Uh, but I think certainly once you're here and you get used to it, unless you're you know, born and raised in, in a different part of the country and really looking to stay there, uh, I think you'd really like what you see here. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to UAMF. Um, okay, so um, I'm Kenny Master with UIMS. Our question was, how can students express interest in, your pro in our program this year through the application cycle since things are so different this year? And I actually reached out to the program directors today to kind of get their feedback on this. And so the feedback that I had gotten was that, you know, it can be overwhelming for just the program director itself to kind of get all the messages. And so one way to kind of stand out and express interest can be through the personal statement. But of course, you know, this year we're probably going to receive more applications. And so another way as well that can really help you stand out is see where your own faculty are from, from your psychiatry departments. Where did they study? Who do they know? And, and trying to network that. Because that can be, you know, a good way for them to go out of like so-and-so is from this region and really wants to get back to the East Coast or, or down south because they because they have family um, and just sending a message like that can be really helpful and that way that that can be sent to like multiple different faculty who are involved and not just the program director yeah all right so um, the question for atrium health was can you speak to any specific psychosis and or LGBTQ clinic elective opportunities that exist within your program. So um, I can actually answer both of those. So we do have a first episode psychosis program. It's a NIH funded collaborative um, providing wraparound services and integrated mental health care uh, for first episode psychosis patients, people that have had a first episode within the first three years. And um, you will work in that clinic during your third year as a half day per week. And as for LGBTQ opportunities, I've already spoken about our program's commitment to inclusion and diversity, um, as well as our program leadership's personal investment in education in this topic. Um, but we are affiliated with a local organization called Time Out Youth, which serves LGBTQ youth ages 11 to 20. And with that, I'll pass it off to University of Utah. So we were asked about a strength and a weakness of our program. So the strength I already mentioned, flexibility is wonderful in our program. And it's not just the vacation days. We have a lot of elective opportunities. They span a lot of subspecialty um, subjects. Uh, we also can really make the program our own. Um, and we've done really interesting things. So people in the global mental health track have been able to go abroad and do mental health um, abroad. I've been able to pursue my interest in integrative psychiatry and there's more traditional things too, like neuromodulation and psychotherapy. A weakness is we do just have the two fellowships. Um, they are working on developing a CL fellowship, uh, but uh, if you wanna train outside of addiction child, um, we have been having to seek that training elsewhere. 
And with that, I'm gonna pass it along to University of Virginia. Okay, the question that we wound up getting was, um, how can students express an interest in your program this year, um, especially because of the anticipated rise in applications and, you know, people can't do sub eyes. Um, so I think step one is being human and giving us a sense of your story. The application itself is a good modality by which you can kind of speak to your own truth and tell us who you are, um, you know, especially through the personal statement and then any area where you can write something about yourself, what you've taken from something, what you've learned, um, even in those, you know, areas where it's like work experiences, you know, like extracurriculars, you know, not only what you did, but like what you're taking from it. Um, I think, you know, we're a place that really values everyone's individual stories, uh, for sure. Um, if all you knew about me from this, all you would know is that, hey, I have a standard bamboo in the background like every other psych person, and sometimes I'll talk fast. Um, so really getting us a good idea of who you are um, would tend to help. Um, I think also, if you're interested, reach out. You can email us at, you know, psychresidency at virginia.edu. Um, you know, our program coordinator reads a ton of emails. She's super on top of things. So if you are interested, give us a shout. Um, I think that's the best thing that you can do to kind of help yourself because we won't know that you're there until you like let us know and try and reach out to us. Um, so yeah, feel free. Good luck, you guys. And then with that, I'll kind of pass things over to Bryce. Hey Bryce, I'm having difficulty hearing you. We'll pass it off to Adele at Mount Sinai Beth Israel. Thank you. All right, so our question was, how does your program maintain its commitment to diversity and inclusion? Um, very good question. So since Mount Sinai Beth Israel is located in lower Manhattan, we have a very diverse patient population from all backgrounds, cultures, and walks of life. We don't have one um, cookie cutter type of patient. Um, in our outpatient clinic, we see patients from all five rows of New York. Um, our program has had grand rounds presentations focused specifically on cultural concerns. Um, so we take diversity and inclusion very seriously. Um, also, we're proud to have a very diverse group of residents from many cultural backgrounds. Um, and we value incorporating each other's cultures into both our work and personal lives. Um, and then lastly, we've recently expanded our diversity and inclusion curricula that's taught during the PGY one year. Um, and this curriculum focus is, um, is composed of over 15 total hours of didactics. So it really demonstrates our commitment to diversity and inclusion early on in the program. And with that, I'll pass it over to UNC. Um, hey, so our question was about how to express interest in our program through the uh, application, um, given the changes um, in recent times and the inability to do sub eyes. So great question. Um, it's, uh, it's definitely really helpful to stay in touch with our program, our faculty, our residents. Um, occasionally, people have connections with our program or our location, um, so if that's the case, definitely talk about that. Um, I personally had zero connection with the area. I moved across the country, didn't know anyone here. So what worked really well for me was just really emphasizing what I found unique about the program, about UNC's program. Um, so really just be specific, specify um, what you like and talk about that. Um, historically, we've had a second look day, um, more updates to come on that, but uh, that's also something to think about. Um, over to Harvard South Shore. Hello, everyone. Um, so the question posed to us is the culture uh, between PGY 1 through 4 and a specific example of how PGY 1s are supported uh, by the 2s to 4s when they start intern year. Um, I think the culture is like family. Intern year, you typically have a really strong and almost intense bond with the PGY2 because you go through a call together, but with uh, moon, internal moonlighting, you can develop that with the third and fourth years. I'll use myself as an example. I came in thinking I was going to do trials. So when I was a rotation with a fourth year, I started a project on like massive multiplayer online gaming, which I finished and published on Harvard Review. Um, but then I switched over to geriatric psychiatry, so I plugged myself in with a geriatric, uh, with a resident interested in going to geriatric psychiatry, and he got me involved in multiple projects related to geriatric psychiatry, um, in the geriatric committee of Mass Life Society. Um, so I, I guess the short answer is, your 
at first close with the twos, but then as you develop more about yourself, you can form relationship with threes and fours that will help you um, along the way. And with that, I'll pass it back to Bryce. Thanks. Can you guys hear me now? We can. Click and gone. Awesome. Okay. Thanks for being patient. Uh, so our question was, uh, how did your program support you through the pandemic? Great question. Uh, during the peak in New York, it was a very intense experience for all of us caring for our patients. Um, anyone who needed time off was accommodated. Many residents, including myself, volunteered to pull extra shifts in medical units or in the medical ED, uh, not, because, not just because we wanted to support our patients, but also because we wanted to support our colleagues. It's a very strong sense of teamwork here. Uh, every resident in the program also got months of hazard pay. Then, immediately after, during the uprisings for racial justice, right after the peak, um, protesters were being arrested. I asked Antonia, our program director, what would happen if a resident got arrested. She immediately got on the phone, figuring out how to bail out residents, how to fight for their rights. If that happened, uh, it was very clear how much they had our backs. Uh, it's a really good feeling. Uh, thanks for waiting for me to come back on, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Bryce. Uh, um, and I just wanted to thank all programs for joining us today. Uh, next week, we will have another webinar with some other awesome programs. There will be 14 residency programs joining. You have heard from the 12 of us, but we also want to give you an opportunity to hear from other programs. Many of you are registered uh, for that webinar, but if not, you can sign up uh, by going to the, the same uh, form that we, uh, we created. So uh, thanks again. I really appreciate all of the programs together. If you guys could all turn on your videos, all the, the 14 programs that are joining us today, uh, we are so happy to be able to host this for you guys. And uh, we want to figure out ways in which we can continue to improve this recruitment cycle. Uh, so we will be sending out a feedback survey after the webinar next week. Um, and we want to know what we can do for you to help you through the next next few months. We know it can be a challenge. Uh, we know that interviews are stressful, but can be even more stressful during a time of COVID and during a time when they are virtual. So thanks again for joining us. Uh, we appreciate it. Our promise was to be done by eight and ensure that every program spent five minutes chatting and one minute for question and answer. And although that might seem like a short period of time, we wanted to give you a glimpse into all of our programs. We want you to be able to follow us on Instagram, as my timer goes off, indicating that we are almost through. Um, and we want to be able to have you join us on our own open house sessions. So please check us all out on Instagram. Please uh, uh, join our individual open house sessions where you'll get an opportunity to meet different residents and or faculty. And thanks again for joining us, guys. Have a good evening. And please stay safe if you are in Utah, University of Utah, with their crazy storm. Uh, we appreciate you guys getting on tonight as well and joining us. So thanks, guys. Bye, everybody.